everyone, it's Reagan and welcome to the start of another reading vlog. So, it is actually Tuesday evening. I have a few days off from work. I took Tuesday and Wednesday off. I spent most of my Tuesday actually doing other work, but I don't have to mention or talk about that right now. But I wanted to start a reading vlog because I'm currently reading a book I'm low-key obsessed with and so I want to make sure to document the you know me finishing it and then also jumping into my next book which I'm also very very excited about spoiler alert this video is going to have a lot of vampires in it I feel like I am in like a whole new me aka middle school me because I am just consuming all the vampire media right now and loving it. <laughs> uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about the books I'm currently reading. So the first book I wanna talk about in the book I've been primarily reading over the past couple days is A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. I am 376 pages of the way through. There's about 580 pages of this novel, so I have 200 pages left. I'm honestly gonna try to finish this tonight because I am loving it. I'll give a more in-depth view, but essentially this follows a witch and a vampire and they're both very um, successful academics and they're studying in Oxford and like there are three supernatural creatures that are supposed to basically never be around each other but they kind of become drawn and there's like a romance there but there's also like an academic and historical mystery. It's so angsty but and pretentious but I'm really really enjoying it. It's just so entertaining. So I'm flying through it and I feel like I'm going to finish it tonight. And then from there, I want to start Mad Ship by Robin Hobb. I already have um, rented the ebook of this from my library through Libby. So I want to, you know, get started. This is like a 900 page book. So I better start now if I'm going to finish it before the end of the month. But these are the two books I hope to primarily feature within this reading vlog. A Discovery of Witches is not the only vampire based media I'm going to be featuring because I've also started rewatching Vampire Diaries, which is just giving me all of the feels and the throwback vibes. <laughs> um, namely, I loved this show in high school. I never actually finished it. I think I only watched through season five. So. I started rewatching it. It's ridiculous and incredibly entertaining. And I apparently am still a simp for Damon Salvatore. So who's surprised? Not me. And obviously Klaus, but Klaus, I haven't gotten to Klaus yet. I'm only on episode three, so I have a lot to watch. So vampires and witches and supernatural creatures galore in this vlog. <laughs> I have forgotten how much I love vampire tropes, but I'm I'm knee deep in it now. So anyway, welcome to this reading vlog. It definitely has a clear theme. I hope you enjoy. I think I'm gonna have some ice cream as a little bit of a celebratory moment because I just wrapped up my work day. I had a kind of a out of my comfort zone work day, but I did it and then I started vlogging. So hey, um, so yeah, anyway, I have this evening and tomorrow off. So let's start the vlog. I love Vampire Diaries. I have some ice cream. We have a lot of options, but I think I'm gonna go for cookies and cream. That sounds good. Also, I've decided on decorating Christmas starting a little bit today, but mostly tomorrow. I'm not gonna put my tree up for probably another couple weeks, but I'm gonna start putting up some like garland and things around the apartment. I'm gonna start with two little couch pillows I've picked up, which I'll show you guys. I'm very excited about them. All right, here are my pillows. I got this from Target. Uh, and then this guy was very hard to track down. It's sold out online, but it's from Pottery Barn. I bought my pumpkin pillow from Pottery Barn. And they released these little candy ones, which I think are so cute. I honestly wish I bought two. But here's the start of my holiday festivities. And there's Matilda. Being cozy, but now it's time to eat ice cream. Hi world, I am sitting down to actually do some reading. I'm definitely gonna be watching more Vampire Diaries tonight, but I wanted to break up my reading, or rather my watching with some reading, but I wanted to talk more about the discovery of witches and also just express to you guys how much I'm liking this book. It's like everything I wanted it to be, but also way better than in full transparency I was expecting it to be. Like this book is really the whole package for what I was looking for. So more context going in, I was really intrigued by this novel because I wanted like a vampire centered romance story. 
And this book is definitely that, but it's also so much more. So context, this is a story that primarily follows Diana and Matthew. So Diana and Matthew are scholars at Oxford. Diana is a historian and the author of this book is also actually a historian. So that knowledge shines through this book so well. The academic setting, the writing, the care, and all the historical background that is that just absolutely permeates this story not just with like it's set in Europe too so not just with like the setting and kind of the dialogue and what the characters are talking about but also how the main character goes about her work as a very prominent historian she analyzes a lot of old documents so she's in archives handling and it's like you know looking through and doing analysis on old archives and it's so cool and I have to say this is really a book like if like 13 year old me dreamed of my future, it would be being an archival historian dating a vampire in Europe. So maybe that's why I'm liking this book so much because in a lot of ways, Diana is the woman I wish, <laughs> who I wanted to grow up to be. Um, so it has this incredible academic setting. It's like pretentious and moody and atmospheric and honestly the best ways. And I really will stand by the pretentiousness, but I think it works given the professions that both of our main characters work in. There's a lot of wine talk, food talk, culture and history talk, and it just kind of sweeps you away and really works with this sort of cerebral vampire sort of setting. On top of that, Diana is a witch. So what's an important thing to note in this novel is that both of our main characters are supernatural and in this world it is known that like witches vampires and demons are a separate species from humans so they all act and work differently because they're you know a different species um but also they're kind of like trying to fit in with humans so they're not really noticed but they're obviously very different diana is very powerful when it comes to being a witch and then matthew is a vampire in this world, vampires and witches are not supposed to really mix in any sort of capacity. There's lots of, you know, like stigma. There's lots of prejudice between the different uh, groups of individuals. So when Diana and Matthew begin to be drawn together, it creates a lot of drama because of that. There's also this sort of academic mystery at the heart of it too. It's this mysterious book that has been missing for like 150 years and at the beginning of the story Diana was able to call it from the archives which like kind of started this whole thing in motion because each individual each different species group wants that book and kind of they also want to keep it from you know the other people as well because it's supposed to hold a lot of knowledge and mystery. So all of that is kind of like the setup of this. It's so entertaining. It has this amazing historical, atmospheric, academic setting, has great atmosphere set in Europe. And you can just see the knowledge of the author throughout the entire book. Coupling that, you have a super angsty and dramatic romance that I really like. And I have to say like, all of the archival talk and historian talk is really speaking to me too, given that that was such a long-term dream of mine for such a big part of my life like I wanted to work in archives and get my PhD um and so it's just really cool I love all the history chat in this novel anyway this is such a rambling clip I'm gonna figure out dinner now well I'm gonna read and then I'm gonna figure out dinner I don't feel like cooking I'll be honest so I'm gonna see if I have like a box of mac and cheese hiding somewhere I don't know what I'm doing with my hair but we'll we'll see but I just wanted to talk about how much I love a discovery of witches. All of you guys are right. Everyone was like, you're gonna love this book. And I was like, I don't know. Then I picked it up and I was like, this is the perfect blend of like obnoxious, pretentious, academic, vampire, witch sort of situation. I love it. I decided to make a classic. I don't feel like cooking chicken pot stickers from Trader Joe's dinner. Bone appetit. I can't stop watching Vampire Diaries, guys. It's gone full-blown addiction. I foresee this is what I'm gonna be doing for the next month, is just marathoning. Vampire Diaries, are you Team Stefan or Team Damon, Matilda? Please, the people must know. All right, I'm not playing around. I'm actually sitting down to read um, right now. I probably will try to sneak in some more Vampire Diaries because I truly cannot stop watching it, but... I also have been thinking about reading this whole day, so I'm gonna get to it. Hi, I've read a quick 50 pages and I just wanted to 
chat about something I just really like about this book and it's how like thoughtfully constructed all the supernatural creatures are. Obviously vampires, witches, demons are creatures that you kind of come across pretty frequently in fantasy but what I really like about this book is how much context, history um, is kind of given to each of these characters. What I mean by that is like you get not only like contextual historical background but there's also a lot of discussion about like DNA makeup and given that a lot of people um, are scientists or scholars there's a lot of discussion and interest of like the origin of these different species and also which what makes them genetically unique either from humans or even like between each other um which i just think is really interesting i feel like there's like a spin like kind of like a scientific approach to witches and vampires and demons which i find to be just provides some like interesting background to everyone and also provides like great explanation to how they all act differently um because i feel like often you see vampires interacting with humans in literature but it's really interesting to see how vampires or witches interact with themselves or with other species given that they are made up differently and have different like instincts and reactions um on that topic i did want to flag there are elements of like kind of a possessive romance which you often find within sort of vampire centric romance stories i'll say it doesn't particularly bother me in this one for a couple of reasons and obviously like everyone's up to their own opinion i'm not saying it's perfect by any means i'm just saying it doesn't necessarily bother me for one and i think probably the most important is that the power dynamic between the two characters is really equal like they're both very self-actualized and successful in their own careers and their own life and a lot of it is like consensual on how they're moving forward in their relationship and it's not like anyone is necessarily backing down but it's like two different kind of species coming together and forcing the other to kind of understand why both sides are reacting in certain ways which i think is really interesting coupling that with a lot of the sort of genetic talk it's like you can't get mad at a wolf for being territorial because it's like in their genetic code the same can kind of be said for vampires in this story like they're very territorial um like literally for their like space and their family so it's just like an interesting concept that's talked about quite a bit um and in general i like diana and and matthew's like banter back and forth and i find their romance to be very angsty and super dramatic because obviously like it's the ultimate forbidden love they like they shouldn't even be talking to each other let alone like falling in love um so it creates quite a bit of drama but i just wanted to shout that i just in general i really appreciate like how well researched a fantasy novel is like there's so much historical input and like everything is really mapped out and you can feel that within the language and the world itself um like obviously this is fiction but it's just like like i almost feel like there should be like footnotes sometimes <laughs> like in a good way so yeah anyway i really like it and in general i find the writing to be really engaging too the beginnings may be a little slow, but for the most part, I fell right into the story right away. And um, I'm just here for all the angst and the history and the drama and all of it. So I'm going to keep reading. I just wanted to give it like a bit of an update and a little more context. And I'm excited to learn more about a lot of the like secrets and secret societies because a lot of these creatures have been living for a long time. So they've had their hand in a lot of like well-known historical discoveries, scientific discoveries, like famous figures in time so that part of the book is really cool too but back to reading all right quick reading update because i have read quite a bit over 100 pages um one i've expressed already that i'm really enjoying learning more about how the creatures like work i guess within this fantastical world work um we've had a lot of vampire information but the past little bit has been really focused on magic and the witch history which has been so fascinating and two i'm really liking how their relationship is developing through time i really love how they complement and contrast each other they're both very intense and very powerful so like i really like how they both respect the other's power and like i don't know it's just an interesting dynamic and i'm liking it but i'm gonna get back to reading i only have a little bit left um so i'm gonna focus on so i'm gonna focus on getting as far as i can this evening before i fall asleep which might be soon <laughs> hello world good morning it's a very gloomy day outside i think it's actually gonna rain all day but 
I woke up, I got dressed, I'm wearing a Cezanne sweater, which is no surprise, I actually own this in two colors. Um, it has buttons, which I think are really fun. I have a cup of coffee, and would you believe it? Vampire Diaries. I'm already on episode eight. I have no idea how that happened. <laughs> Also, I got to page 500 last night of my book, so I have about 76 pages left, which I'm also going to strive to finish this morning as well, and then I'm going to start the Mad Ship, but I have the day off, so I have a few, like, things I need to edit and stuff, but for the most part, I'm really just going to spend the day relaxing and... I don't know. Just... I guess that that's it, really. I'm going to try to relax today. Time for a second pot of coffee. Clay's on the phone. All right. And Millie's so cute. Um, It'd be a day off if I didn't treat myself to a fresh baguette for lunch. My ultimate favorite meal. I know, just a loaf of bread, but it's just so good. I am, as they say, living my best life. Hi friends, apologies for not checking in. It's already so dark, it started pouring rain. So it's been great atmosphere to read all the vampire stuff. So I'm happy to say I have finished um, A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness and I really enjoyed it. I really feel like the plot too got so wild in that back third of the book. Um, and I do feel like all the exposition of the novel kind of leading, sorry, Millie wants to get under the covers, leading up to it really helped it. Um, just the secrets and the mystery and also the interactions between different uh, And also just the interactions between the daemons witches and vampires which is so fascinating Learning more about the magic especially through our main character Diana who is a witch her family's a witch She's always known about magic, but for the most part she's been kind of Avoiding the use of magic her whole life like she never really wanted to embrace her powers But throughout this book she's not only learning more about the mystery of her parents, but also kind of learning more about her own personal magic and seeing that growth and kind of her own individual fierceness and then how her and Matthew complement each other in that way. So entertaining. It's really cool. And the magic in this book is really cool. And I don't know, I just feel like everything was really well plotted out. Like, yes, we are utilizing supernatural creatures that are pretty common, um, but I do feel like Deborah Harkness, like, embraced them and provided such a rich tapestry for their backstory for their history and for how like her magic and her vampires work within her world which just makes it a really interesting story like don't get me wrong angsty dramatic love story but it has such cool components working behind the scenes too so i'm excited to pick up book two the end was crazy fast paced. I'm really interested to see how the story continues to expand i also am trying to figure out how i can watch the tv show i think it's only airing in the uk and I'm also curious, like, what, like, if I start the show, will I be spoiling myself for book two and three? Or is it just, like, book one? Let me know if anyone has watched it. I've heard really good things. But, any hoosies, I'm going to go watch a bit more Vampire Diaries because I cannot stop. I'm consuming all the vampire media. And I'm going to start the Mad Ship. Oh, actually, I, I want to show you guys my bookshelf. I'm going to do a little impromptu, casual bookshelf tour. <laughs> So, I want to show you my bookshelf because I actually did some reorganization and I wanted to kind of chalk through it before it got too dark. Um, but I finally took a lot of you guys' advice and just did some rearranging to make it a lot more functional. And also I just re rearranged things based off of like new favorite series. I just haven't really changed things in years. So first off, you'll notice this shelf up here is like my Robin Hobb shrine. I also have Kendar Blake series and I also have the Thief series by Megan Wallen Turner. Big fan of that shelf. And then I updated this shelf to include um, the Davabad trilogy and Kay Jemison, which is key along with my Cinda Williams Chima books. Then I did a very dramatic set of stacking in these two big shelves just to save space. And then these ones haven't changed too much. Um, I swapped out some books there for some more exciting fantasy series I'm just excited about. And then these books are the same. And then this shelf hasn't changed at all. And then here is where I started my process of double stacking, but they're organized before I had double stacking, but they weren't organized in any capacity, but now they are. So I can get to like my series easier. Everything is just kind of in a better place. So this is my impromptu bookshelf tour. 
I don't know if I'm gonna be filming a formal bookshelf tour anytime soon, so I apologize in advance. Hopefully this satiates you a little bit, but I don't know, I'm really pleased with it. I especially love this new top shelf, and I really like this, because I just fit so much. And um, I don't know, I've just, it excites me. Like I've, I finally put like this series up, which is one of my favorites of all time, and it's just been like hidden stacked away unorganized but like now they're out on display by uh city of stairs by robert jackson bennett so excellent but yeah yeah this is what things are looking like now i am i think i'm gonna sit there now though and watch vampire diaries and then start the mad ship but i have read over 200 pages so far um and I have a good amount of time left, which is exciting. I have obviously all this evening and then tomorrow. I do go back to work tomorrow, so I'll have less time to read tomorrow, but you know, I'm not really doing anything except hanging out around my apartment anyway, so I'm excited to keep on reading. Oh, I also wanted to show off my new lounge pants. My mom sent me these. They're from J. Crew, and they're in these cute like buffalo plaid color. They're pretty lightweight actually, which is nice. Um, I don't know, they're festive and comfy, so I switched into these and I've been wearing them all day. Thanks, mom. All right, I laundered and I'm actually gonna start dinner. I'm gonna make enchiladas. I'm gonna put the Real Housewives on and then I'll probably watch more Vampire Diaries. I am like halfway through season one already, um, which I feel like I've just watched really quickly. Luckily, there's so many episodes because I think every season is like 22 episodes, which is just wild, so. I think it'll keep me very entertained for the month of November. Nonetheless, I am quite peckish. Oh, Matilda. And I'm excited to eat some enchiladas. But first, Real Housewives. Filling is on its way cooking. And then I'm also heating up some beans to mash to put inside. You guys have seen me make these a bunch of times. They're one of my favorite things to cook. Really easy, really delicious. Now it's time for assembly. Bon Appetit. I'm gonna chow down, watch some more bad TV. Well, no, Vampire Diaries is not bad TV. It's certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, and don't you forget it. Then I'm gonna go back to reading The Mad Ship and also give, just give you guys a general opinion of the book so far. And we are enjoying. Hi, not gonna lie, I've had a very hard time pulling myself away from all things vampires. If it's not the discovery of witches, it's the vampire diaries, I just can't stop watching but I'm making myself read for at least an hour and then I'm probably gonna watch more Vampire Diaries and play Super Mario Sunshine while I do it and just kind of unwind. I'm also trying to just get off my phone. I've also spent too much time on Instagram this evening but you know happens to the best of us but I've read about 20 pages so far of the Mad Ship and obviously the live ship uh, live ship trilogy but the first one which I read what was it called? Ship of Magic? I loved. It's so far my favorite Robin Hobb book. Sweep me away. Beautiful writing. Just an agonizing series of events and an agonizing set of characters that will just break you but also like keep you reading more. Um, the last book ended on just a lot <laughs> and so I know this book is going to be heavy with emotions um, and it's opening on like a lot of big things from the last book but so good and if you're not familiar with the live ship traders trilogy is all about it's an epic fantasy multi pov lots of different perspectives and it centers around um like trading and piracy and ships in the ocean <laughs> um and all of that and like passion and betrayal and family and just like everything and it just oh it's so good robin hobb's characters are just so real so real um but anyway, so I'm gonna try to read for an hour, then I get to watch more David and Stefan <laughs> Vampire Diaries. I'm on episode 15. I've watched 15 episodes in like two days. <laughs> anyway, so that's that. I'm gonna read by. I made a bowl of popcorn. I read a nice decent chunk of The Mad Ship, which is excellent. So, but that means I have earned some Vampire Diaries. So, let's begin. All right, Matilda and I are back to reading. No more Vampire Diaries tonight. 
I go back to work tomorrow too after a few days off, so I've got to mentally prepare to like, I don't know, have expectations put on me besides, you know, getting able to watch Vampire Diaries and read, but such is life. Girls got to pay the bills. <laughs> friends good morning I am back at work today um, I'm actually a huge fan of this sweater it's reversible well you can wear it this direction with the buttons in the front you can wear it with the buttons in the back you can also just wear it as a cardigan it's really really soft and I was able to read over a hundred pages of the mad ship last night which I'm really really pleased with it's honestly so excellent I'll talk more about it later but it's definitely it basically starts off right where the last book ends so the pacing is immediate there's no like gradual lead-in it's just it opens and you're like oh yeah all of this was happening wild um so I definitely hope to read more tonight, get to page at least 200, but maybe more. And then obviously I'll have read a good chunk over the past three days, but I do actually have like a meeting right now, I think. So I gotta go. Just wanted to show off my OOTD. Hi friends, I'm already in PJs. I'm wrapping up work. I'm honestly so hungry. So I think I'm actually gonna start dinner like right away tonight. I was actually planning on going to Michael's after work. But then it became like pitch black, middle of the night dark at 4.30 because it was stormy today. So this is the darkness game and I just cannot be bothered. Um, so I'm delaying my Christmas decor till this weekend when I have more energy, I guess. Uh, the lack of sun tuckers me out. But good news, I was actually able to read a bit at lunch. So I've passed the 150 page mark of The Mad Ship. And it's so good. Actually, I'm gonna sit down for a second. The book is so good and there's so many reasons why it's good, but one of them, and I feel very strongly about this, is that I feel like I read a lot of epic fantasy and a lot of epic fantasy is written by men. And it's not to say a lot of those stories don't have excellent characters, but I would say predominantly there are either a limited number of female characters within their stories or there aren't very many or they're kind of like background characters or they're kind of playing like one or two common tropes in the story. Again, I'm not trying to imply that there are, you know, no good fantasy stories with interesting female characters in the fantasy space because that is false. But I think it's also true that we've all encountered some terrible female characters in fantasy. Like that is a known piece of dialogue. Robin Hobb, particularly in the Live Ship Trader trilogy, at least I've encountered so far, has such a huge cast of characters and so many of them are women and they're all different from each other. They all have different motivations, skills, interests, approaches to life, temperaments, expectations. Like they're all different. And I really mean this, like I don't feel like I've seen such an interesting and wide cast of characters with so many different women of so many different ages within one story and they're all so dynamic and well written like their points of views their desires like everything is so perfectly written out and same could be said for all the male characters as well which there are definitely many of them this isn't just all a full female cast but there's just so many interesting female characters within the live ship trader trilogy and i'm living for it and obviously robin hobb is a woman so i feel like she's just i don't know she's just there's just so much life in this book and so much heart and it's so good and the characters are just so excellent and I saw that within the Farseer trilogy her ability to write fits was excellent and I just feel like you see that skill just transcend itself across I don't know, like 15 different characters I feel so deeply connected to um, but I did really want to call out that I just feel like the Live Ship Trader trilogy just has such a wide cast of characters and so many of them are women and it's not just like the common tropes you feel like you run into in fantasy because there's just so many of them and they're all different and I love it. Um, but anyway, I'm going to start dinner now because I'm starving. I'm making sloppy joes tonight because I'm sloppy. <laughs> um, and then, I don't know, I'll probably watch a lot of Vampire Diaries, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Maybe start like a new like sci-fi thriller show. Clay has had to work really late recently and throughout this week, which is why you haven't really seen him, which has allowed me to do quite a bit of reading, which has been nice, but I miss hanging out with him. I want to watch Bleach, which is a new anime we started so badly, but I can't watch without him. So I've just been filling my time with Vampire Diaries. Anyway, I'm rambling. I finished up work, basically. Um, and I just wanted to talk about The Mad Ship because it's so good. Watching Real Housewives, making some potatoes. I cut them into like, more like chips instead of my wedges. 
switching it up tonight. Grounding the ground beef and some onions. I'm about to roast the buns. Potatoes have been cooking for a while. It's just a casual, tasty dinner tonight. Dinner is, I just mixed them up ready, so now it's just time to assemble and consume. Hi, does anyone else have a cauldron of Halloween candy still? Because I do. It doesn't really match with my season aesthetic anymore, but I also love candy, so I'm gonna pull a bunch out of here and then go play Mario Sunshine. Just got a star. The most infamous friendship of all time is starting. Well, not really quite yet. I've officially almost watched the entirety of season one of Vampire Diaries. The show really holds up. So I watched most of the show in high school, which I think I already mentioned, and I was so addicted to it. I could not stop watching. And for the longest time I wanted to rewatch, but I was worried. I know when you love something so much, but like you're younger and you worry if you revisit it as, as an adult, like you won't find it as entertaining as you did previously. So I've been holding off re-watching and finishing the show because I was like, man, I have such fond memories attached to Vampire Diaries if I don't find it entertaining. Like, that'll be such a bummer. But I finally just bit <laughs> the bullet and decided to rewatch, and it's still so entertaining. Like, it's so addicting. It's ridiculous, but like, that's part of the fun, you know? Um, everyone's acting like, I don't even know, like, not. I was gonna say 30 year olds, but I'm like, that's not even accurate. <laughs> Um, but now I'm going to sit down and do some reading. My hope is to get to page probably like 250, 275 of The Mad Ship tonight. Which I don't think will be a problem, but I am going to focus on it now. I do feel like I'm reading this book, I don't know, pretty quickly. I feel like, um, obviously these books are really long. It's just, the Mad Ship's over 900 pages, so getting a third of the way through it will be great and I think that's truly just a testament to the pacing like the first one had a lot of things to set up but but the table is set you know the pieces are in play so it was really just like just picking up right where it left off and just the magic and the component of the live ship concept I just think is so cool um, if you're not familiar in this world there is something called wizard wood and that wood can be used to to build things called live ships which are ships that are literally alive they have a personality they have perception they have humanity they have thought obviously um, and at the beginning of this book a family basically quickened a live ship so it's like forming its personality for the first time and throughout the story you meet other live ships um, which are involved with different families and are kind of connected to the larger political scheme one of them is known as a mad ship, which is kind of like the namesake of this book, but it's such interesting magic. And I'm also starting to see some parallels between this story and the Farseer trilogy, like little minor Easter eggs, but they're still super satisfying to come across. So I'm definitely happy I read the Farseer trilogy before picking this up, but I do stand by that like you could 100% read the live ship trilogy first before Farseer. So I'd say like whichever one sounds more interesting to you, maybe start there. Um, just because I love Robin Hobb and I want everyone to read her books. But anyway, I'm going to keep reading. I just wanted to give you guys an update. I'm not sure if I'll do another one tonight. Obviously, we're nearing the end of the vlog, any hoosies. So if anything, I will see you tomorrow um, and we will chat then. Hi friends and welcome to the end of the vlog. The next day, I just wanted to pop in and quickly wrap up everything I was able to read over the past three days because it's actually quite a bit. Um, first and foremost, obviously I finished the last 210 pages of The Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. I've gone on and on about this book, but I really loved it. I really think if you love romance and atmosphere and vampires, pick it up because I do not think you'll be disappointed. And I'm really excited to see what happens in book two because things really escalated at the end of that novel and took went to a place I wasn't anticipating, but I think it's gonna make even book two more interesting. I can't wait. Um, and then obviously I was actually able to read to page 260 of Mad Ship by Robin Hobb. I love this book so far. <laughs> um, it's so satisfying in a way that like, because these novels are so long, like Robin Hobb is taking her time for things to develop. So there's just so much anticipation and when certain characters begin to intersect or storylines begin to kind of make their way back to certain places, it's satisfying because you've been waiting for it, you've been anticipating it. It's in the same way like Game of Thrones, like sometimes you'll be 
in a book by written by George R. R. Martin where you're in the forest with two characters for like 900 pages and you're just waiting for them and waiting for them to arrive at wherever it is they're going to but when they get there it feels so good and you felt like you too went along on that journey like that's what pays off so successfully I think in fantasy novels because yes there are shorter books and you don't need all that space and time to develop things but when you come across an author or a story that is just so well paced in that way it's so satisfying I can't like I just don't feel like I've come across this feeling in any other instance um, aside from epic fantasy because you're just like you can see the threads and you sort of know they're gonna come back you just don't know when and you're along for the ride and it sometimes is painful it's like 700 pages long but when it gets there you just want to throw a party because you've been waiting and waiting and it's just it just feels good anyway i came across one of those scenes in this book last night and i stayed up way too late because once i realized it was finally happening i could not put the book down um just excellent. Anyway, I'm rambling. So yeah, I was able to read 260 pages, which means I read just under 500 pages for the past three days, which I'm really excited with. I'm actually about to start another vlog at the top, like right when I stop this clip, I'm going to start another vlog. Um, so I'll be doing more reading over the next couple of days, which is great. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you soon with another one soon. Goodbye.